Grand Rising, and welcome to the voice of Cheryl. I am Toothless Tiger. I want to start out by asking the question that's the name of this video. What can we do in such a time as this? Well, I'm a firm believer in research and reading. I'm a firm believer in knowledge is power. And so one thing we can do is learn what to do. Because a lot of what we've been taught is the opposite of what we should be doing and teaching our children. So I have a couple of topics that I'm going to start on today. And I'm going to start with education. We look at our education system and then we wonder, you know, why is it that we can't get this and we can't get that? And it was never designed for us to get any further than we are. And for us to have doctors, lawyers, philosophers, um, musicians, um, it's just really poets. It's phenomenal. And that's the problem with the system that's in place. We live in a system and it's called silent weapons for quiet wars systems. And those systems are in place to keep us in place without doing it to, you know, it's to our detriment but they don't want us to know that that's what's happening to us. We're thinking it's something that we're doing or something that we're not doing. Or let me say it a different way, like it's in our power to do. But anytime you don't control your economy, your belief system, your health, your education, your entertainment, the laws that are used against you. Anytime you don't control those things, the wars that are fought around you, then you have no control. We're viewed as children in the eyes of this system of silent weapons for quiet wars. All of us we are not viewed as adults. Therefore, they tell us what to do. And they tell our children what to do because they took all of the power away from us to discipline our children. Uh, we have no say in their medical care. If we choose to question a doctor, then um, they have an agency in place, CPS, that comes and say that we're not fit mothers or fathers and yank our children away. So we have to learn how to be American. And I think I said that on the last video. You know, I am a Moor by my bloodline. And being a Moor, Noah Drew Ali, which he is the prophet that came and freed the people as many as he could. He was like Harriet Tubman. He would have freed more people had they known they were in bondage. And we're in that same bondage today. And all we want is an opportunity to live in our land, on our land, free. Free from liens. Free from unfair, you know, and um, what do you call that? I used to know what you called it, but you know, I told you sometimes the mind kind of absorbs so much. But I think I'm trying to say encumbrances, but I don't know if that's what I'm trying to say or not. But that's what I'm going to say. We just want to live and, uh, you know, travel, have fun with our children, perhaps grandchildren if we have any. And, um, pay our fair share and um, just enjoy all of the things that are here for us to enjoy. But unfortunately, it is not that way. 
So we must ask ourselves, if it is not that way, what can we do in such a time as this? I started with education because I want to share with you the philosophies of the gentleman who started the education system. And I'm going to read that to you because I did not memorize it. I can definitely tell you about it, but I'd like for you to hear their words. This is the philosophy of founders of the General Education Board, John D. Rockefeller and Frederick T. Gates. And this is uh, 1902. And of course, I know you're familiar with the Gates name. I know I am. In our dreams, we have limitless resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present education conventions fade from their minds and unhampered by tradition, we work our own goodwill upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or men of science. We have not to raise up from among them authors, editors, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo great artists, painters, musicians, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen, of whom we have an ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is very simple as well as a very beautiful one. To train these people as we find them to a perfectly ideal life just where they are. So we will organize our children and teach them to do in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way. In the homes, in the shops, and on the farm. Now that's the way it was in 1902 and that was the philosophy of the education board and that's the public education system. Now one day we were looking at Kwame and Someone had said in the chat that there was um, trades back in the 1800s and somewhere around the 1860s or something. And so once I heard that, of course, I did my little due diligence and got this little apparatus that we call a cell phone. I got this little thing and I wish more people would really acknowledge it and use it. This little thing here that we call a cell phone is a computer and we have a wealth of knowledge in our hands at the touch of a button. There is a mic if you don't want to type you can ask the question and you can ask Google anything. Now we have to know that that's got to be a great idea because they're doing so much to keep us <laughs> from talking on YouTube. And that's really disheartening because the First Amendment gives us freedom of speech. And as long as we're not inciting riots or trying to overthrow the government, then we should be able to speak as adults one to another, share ideals and resolve issues. Unfortunately, that's not the case. But with this internet, you can learn so much. And that's why they're trying to restrict it, in my personal opinion. They're trying to restrict it because we can learn so much. We were taught so wrong. And our parents did the best that they could. They did what they were taught and what they were taught before them. But if we would just give honor to the ancestors 
and ask ourselves the question, what can I do as an individual owning it and taking responsibility in such a time as this? Maybe I can't save the world. Maybe I can't even change their minds. But it might be one somebody that hear my voice that may resonate with something that I say. And maybe it'll send them to start researching. And perhaps they can have a conversation with their family members. And it's amazing how when I talk to my older siblings, they know a whole lot of stuff that I just had no damn clue about. I mean, I'll be like, damn, if y'all know all that, and y'all believe it. It's, it's unbelievable, you know, for me. Because they're pretty knowledgeable on things that I had no clue about. But getting back to education. So that was 1902. But I went and did the research and I found a book on Amazon. And um, it was about 1860. And so... The reading of the philosophy statement of the education board and the reading that I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do a couple of lines out of this book, which a couple of be more than two, of course, but I'm going to read a few lines out of this book. This is for fair use and it is for research purposes. It is for education and um, statistical data. And hopefully, it is to prompt somebody to ask, what can I do? And just start researching and then find your niche. I tell people all the time, and especially young people, because there are so many talented young people and they have a desire to do. And my daddy used to teach us to do things when you're able, because the time will come when you won't be able. And that is so true. I'm there. With heart failure that I found out is congestive heart failure. I can barely take five steps and still have breath. But yet I rise and take five steps every now and then. So I can want to run. I can want to walk, but I don't have it in me. So I tell them, get you a YouTube channel. Get you a YouTube channel, something that you love, you're good at it, you're beautiful, you have a beautiful smile, a beautiful countenance. People will come, and I believe that. I'm at 166 subs right now and I'm you know I'm just as ecstatic as I was when I got my first 100 I'm so very happy and I would have to lay claim and thank true results I call him true he gave me my first chance on a live and I felt like a movie star in the making and then John Rhymes, better known as It's Been Real, John Crimes. <laughs> I love that young man. And the It's Been Real family. And now I've joined another one of his channels, the John Hinge Show, and it's fantastic. John Crimes, his documentary channel. Y'all got to check it out. And I would ask that you guys would go and subscribe to True and to John. And then I must add, it's been real. Which is John. I just said that. That's that old timers kicking in. And I call it sometimes. <laughs> because a lot of people get Alzheimer's mixed up. So I don't want you to think that I'm being funny or taking it lightly. That I know people have Alzheimer's. But I call my condition sometimes 
Because sometimes I, you know, remember, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I fuck up the words, sometimes I don't. So it's a sometimes for me. But it's we are one. And that's Lou. And I love the we are one family. I love Kwame Brown's bus life. But they talk about so many issues. I think it's time for a lot of us to just quit and join their conversation and join them in what they're doing. And everything that, you know, Kwame says, we're not going to agree with. And he said, that's cool. Because he don't agree with us either. And that's cool. That's what life is all about. But we got to do our part. You know, everybody is searching for a hero. I think Whitney Houston said that in her song. But damn, don't you want to be the hero in your child's life or your nieces and nephews? Someone that looks up to you, don't you want to be the one that teach them something? I know I do. But maybe everybody don't want to teach. And that's okay. Because if you don't teach, just do what you can do. But... Michael Jackson say you want to be starting some. I say you ought to be doing some. You ought to be doing some. Whatever it is you can do, you ought to be found doing it. So getting back to what I was telling you guys, this book here, The Education of Blacks in the South, is 1860 to 1935. Well, this book is pretty good. And I never started reading a book at the beginning of a book. I started wherever I start. And I started this one on page 82. And so, like I said, I want to just read a few lines out of here just so we can get a real understanding, uh, overstanding, understanding of what it's really like for us. Because... It is so unfair. It's called, it's a system in place. And that's what we're going to have to learn as a people. That it is truly a system in place. And you're going to either give in to the system. You're going to book the system. Or you're going to learn to live who you are. And that's a free unalienable right sentient being that's what you're going to learn because might is not going to whoop these people we can't do it with might we don't have the weaponry to do it intellect they don't give us credit although they know that we have it so they have what they call Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. And that's another dynamic book. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. And that's the system that's in place against us today. And you can either learn about it and learn how to navigate through these waters or you can drown by tipping the boat over but you're going to have to choose you're going to have to choose going back to the booklet on page 82 like I said I, I have underlined some things that I just want to just read a few to kind of give you a grasp of what it was like in 1860 and uh, they were starting up with the education of the south of the Negro and um, this guy William H. Baldwin this is one of the things that he was saying in the Negro is the opportunity of the South time has proven that he is best fitted to perform the heavy labor in southern states the Negro and the mule is the only combination so far to grow cotton. The South needs him 
but the South needs him educated to be a suitable citizen. Properly directed, he is the best possible laborer to meet the climate conditions of the South. Hampton program would achieve the proper racial hierarchy by teaching black youth to work with their hands, to have few wants, and to stay in their natural environment. Then we go on and they talk about the Capone Springs Coalition. And in speaking about that coalition, it goes to tell on that they used to have the meetings. I don't want to read that whole paragraph. So I'm trying to just find the model after the Lake Mahonk conference on the Negro question. The first three annual meetings were private and informal. And no black persons were invited or permitted to attend. Noticeably absent also were members of Northern Missionary Societies. The Capone Springs Coalition, as Lewis Harlan has demonstrated, was an intersectional partnership of white Northern industrial philanthropists and white Southern businessmen and middle class professional educators. Now, those were the people that was at this meeting. Okay. All right. And this is one of the things that was said at the conference. Appropriately, Principal Frizzle of Hampton Institute gave the opening address at the first Capone Springs Conference for Southern Education. He maintained that slavery had been a civilizing influence on the barbarous Negroes. The white people are to be the leaders, to take the initiative, to have the directive control in all matters pertaining to civilization and the highest interests of our beloved land. We must use common sense in education of the Negro. Most important, we must recognize in all its relations that monumentous facts that the Negro is a child race at least 2,000 years behind the Anglo-Saxon in its development. And I need to go back and correct myself. That word is momentous, not monumentous. It's momentous. So let me read it again. We must use common sense in the education of the Negro. Most important, we must recognize in all its relations that momentous fact that the Negro is a child race at least 2,000 years behind the Anglo-Saxon in its development. Blacks, said Dabney, must work out their salvation by practicing the industrial arts. Hence, nothing is more ridiculous than the program of the good religious people from the North who insist upon teaching Latin, Greek, and philosophy to the Negro boys who come to their schools. Winston agreed that the Old South was overthrown not by Webster and Greeley and Lincoln, but by the industrial inefficiency of Negro slavery. So, in reading those few little lines for you, you kind of get an idea how they feel about us. 
They go on to say the philanthropist, the philanthropist accepted the challenge and officially began that struggle for ideological hegemony in 1898. Hegemony is a word that we need to get used to. That is a word that means one group dominating another. They have us saying the word racism and discrimination. Unfortunately, those are just words. There's only one race and that's the human race. And discrimination, yeah, but they do that with all people. Hegemony is one group dominating another. So you don't have to put a race to it. You can just do the super rich, the 1% dominating the rest of us. And then they teach us the race game by giving us colors so that we can fight amongst ourselves. Or they give us denomination of religions so we can fight amongst ourselves. There's strength in numbers. And it is my hope that I can say something that will help you say something to your family members. And let's kind of change this thing around one family at a time. One person at a time. Anywho, let me move on. That's the education system that we're dealing with. So parents, we've got to do better. It is so much that we do not know that we need to know. I try to put in my description every time I do a video Things that you guys can research and read about, look at, and to, you know, kind of educate yourself. Or if you don't want to do it, let your babies just take the information and have them to do it. Have them to do a little story about what they learned or let them show you how they can look up a word. Uh, I would say that you should go to the uh, older bookstores and try to get the oldest dictionaries you can find. Um, and when I said the older bookstores, I mean like the half price bookstores. You know, places that sell older books um, at cheaper prices. And you can even do that online. You don't necessarily have to go out physically because most of all of my shopping I do, I do it from the comfort of my room. So it is just so worth it. And you don't have to be a scholar. I'm not to learn scholarly things and teach them to your babies. You don't have to be that. You can just do it. I don't know much about a computer. I'm so confused and I would love to be able to um, edit and stuff like that. But I don't have that down pat just yet. So anytime I make a mistake, I have to stop and start all over again because I don't know how to edit it out. But it's okay. I'm just going to take my time and learn it and, you know, go as I go. I want to move to the next subject. And, I, and that subject was about Lil Nas X. I've seen a lot of videos about that and I went and I looked at the Breakfast Club interview. I normally don't look at the Breakfast Club. But because I kept hearing this story, I had to go and look at that interview for myself. And I heard Lil Nas X and he said, you know, fuck them children. And then he said, well, I don't mean fuck them children. But then he went on to tell about how he feel about how people feel about him as an individual. And so he said he didn't give a damn who it upset or who it bothered. He just want to be him and live his life. And I agree. 
100%. I agree. Uh, I think that we all should learn who we are. You see, a lot of us don't understand that ignorance of the law is no excuse. And the reason it's no excuse is because it's our ancestors that started civilization and named the law. So it is no excuse. And once you learn that Islam is a degree of knowledge, I, self, law, am, master, man, know thyself. It's a creed too, but I'm not discounting the creed. So I don't need anybody telling me about, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I don't want to take away from anybody's reverence of what they believe. You know, <laughs> but once you learn that you are, law begins and ends with you, then you can move around a little bit better and with a little bit more self-worth and self-esteem. You know, Charleston White, he's a, a YouTuber from Fort Worth and he works with the youth and he always talk about the uh, brain. So I did some research on the brain because uh, I'm not a doctor and neither is he. But he worked with the youth and he was a youth when he committed his crime. And he learned about the development of the brain. And so I, you know, of course, went to my good friend, my phone, and um, Googled. And it says that the brain doesn't fully develop. And then not even at 25, but at least at 25. And it starts developing from the back to the front. And then it even gave the ages and, and, and the first three years are the most important years of a kid's life. And it gave us some tips as parents that we should, you know, you know, respond to them, be attentive and nurture them. The reason why it's so important what they were saying is because those first three years, you know, they were so dependent on us and they're breaking away in their independence. So that first three, you need to you know, give them as much of the love that you have to give um, during that time period makes so much sense. Then it went on to tell different ages where your brain, where you retain different things at the age of 12 is um, a good age for the preteens. And then it went on to tell at 18 and it tells what all you can remember. Then it went on into the 30s. And then like the 50s and then the 60s, they say we learn words. And so I guess I laugh because that's what I do. And so I know that's true. So it is really interesting to read. And so I would suggest what you do is to um, Google and ask them. And then, you know, speak with a doctor. But it's just so much that we don't even have an idea that we can ask the damn question. We'd be so busy. You know what I'm saying? We don't even have time. And it's so unfair to the children. But getting back to this little Nas X thing, and everyone wants to know why do they want to bring this for our children? And why, 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 why? It's called silent weapons for quiet wars. My daddy had a saying, and I'm about to mess this saying up, but I'm going to try to say it. And I don't know if this is one of his sayings or it's one that he heard somebody else say and he just used to say it. See, I can tell you what my daddy say, but this time I don't know if he said it or if he got it from somewhere. The person was anonymous or something. But my daddy used to tell us a white man was born with a veil over his face. He sees shit happen long before it takes place. 
Poor nigga, all he can say is, woe is me. Because he can't see. I think I just fucked that up, but you get the gist of it. Having said that, back in 1970, hmm, what was it? 73? Okay. Here you go. Back in 1973, I believe it was, um, Henry Kissinger was the Secretary of State. And back during that time period, they were talking about um, population control. And one of the strategies that he came up with for the population um, control, along with Margaret Sanger, who was funded by Frederick T. Gates, and I'm sure you remember that name. <laughs> um, she started Planned Parenthood. And um, the Rockefeller Foundation, which is the Rockefeller family. They did this in 1972. And the title of this, and again, this is fair use. I got this off of Google. Fair use. And it is for research and for education. And it says, homosexuality as a population control strategy in the black community. And all I did was just ask about Henry Kissinger homosexuality plan. And this is one of the articles that came up. So you can Google. It's there. In 1972, the Rockefeller World Population Council, with influence from Planned Parenthood Association, decided it would be best if homosexuality would be no longer treated as an abnormal condition and that it be propagated in the black community as a healthy life choice. The black community, 1972, homosexuality as a population control strategy in the black community. In 1973, in the second edition of the DSM, it was voted out as a mental disorder. It wasn't taken all the way out, but it was voted out as a mental disorder. Therefore, they could start in 1974. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger created National Security Study Memorandum 200. Implications of worldwide population growth for the U.S. security and overseas interest. A. It looks specifically at strategies to control the black population rate across the world. So we're being attacked globally. This is not just an issue that's happening here in what I believe to be the Kingdom of Morocco. And I'm sure somebody would look at me and say, girl, you got to be crazy as hell. I got to be. <laughs> I've been studying. What about you? <clears throat> Dr. Henry Kissinger proposed in his memorandum to the NSC that depopulation should be the highest priority of the U.S. foreign policy towards the third world. He quoted reasons of national security and because the U.S. economy will require large and increasing amounts of minerals from abroad. 
especially from less developed countries. Wherever a lessening of population can increase the prospects for such stability, population policy becomes relevant to resources, supplies, and to the economic interests of U.S. A spermicidal corn developed by the U.S. company is now being tested in Mexico. Males who unknowingly eat the corn produce non-viable sperm and are unable to reproduce. I don't know what else I can say about why, why, why they're flaunting homosexuality, men having babies, but not women. And women give life. I don't know. YouTube may approve my video. YouTube may not approve my video. I have not incited any wars or riots. I have not went against the guidelines. I read where profanity is permitted and I didn't use it to call not one individual out of their name. I've been reading the guidelines and studying them. I seem to me like I'm not getting um, sometimes I always put my videos as age restricted and then I come back and see that I got to push a button to look at it and I don't have that many people looking at my videos. I would love to have more people and I'm going to continue to tell the truth for as long as I'm allowed. Um, I stand on what I say. I do the research. I'm not making this stuff up. Now, perhaps you can say the author is making it up. And that's why I give the credit to the authors. And not to myself. But I do have an intuition. I have a degree of knowledge. And I can believe that, that I believe. And Judge Judy said under the law, if I believe what I believe, then it's not defamation or slander, which that is never my intent. I do my best to try to uplift as opposed to put you down. And I damn sure can put you down, so... Don't think that there's something that I can't do. There's just nothing that I choose to do. I try to spend my time lifting my people up. We've been down a long damn time. You know, they say that we are minors and they have us calling ourselves minority. And uh, they say that we are child race. So they don't view us as adults. And uh, they... Who are they, you would say, sure. Who are they? Silent weapons. The quiet wars. They are the ones that are in control of all of us. That mistreats all of us. See, they got us all thinking that we're different. And we have different classes. No, we don't. We're all the same. <laughs> and they showing us every day. I listen to... Senator Rand Paul, a Republican, yesterday um, had a town hall meeting. I don't know when he had the town hall meeting. I think it was earlier this month. I think it was September the 4th, maybe. But he was explaining. And it's amazing how they can talk about the vaccine and stuff like that. But we can't say the word vaccine. Never in the history of America that I know of that perhaps it was always well at one time we couldn't even read and we still can't to be honest it's so much that they have not taught us um, but to the degree that we think that we're reading 
I hadn't heard of us not being able to say the word vaccine or to talk about free will, you know. And um, that's why I think it's so very important that whosoever have a voice, let them speak and do it on YouTube while we can. You will reach millions of people, even if they never like our videos, if they don't look at them long. I mean, you know, who knows? We could help make a difference and make this a better place for real. You know, everybody claim we are the world and we are the people and we all together and we want to make this a better place. And perhaps one day we'll make this a better place. Uh, just not today. But if we start one day at a time, one issue at a time. I think that we can make a difference. And uh, I love the fact that Kwame loves to fly his flag. So I said, I'm going to get my flag so I can fly it. And uh, I ordered one that's on the desk. But of course, it hasn't come in yet. So I got the one. It's a um, lapel pin flag and uh, I want to share it. Our flag is um, the five-pointed star. It's green. It's red. And um, that red, white, and blue is a flag of commerce that we gave the um, Europeans the authority to come on our land and do commerce. But um, this is what our flag looks like. And uh, that stands, those points, stands for love, peace, truth, justice, and freedom. That's what we strive to live by. Love, peace, justice, freedom. I got to look at it again. I can get it in my head. Love, peace, justice, truth, and freedom. It's a five-point star. We're noble people. Honorable people. And of course, we had some traitors among us. Uh, we had some. That's how we got overthrown. So, in every group of people, we have people that are, you know, divisive and um, all we can do is be the best us that we can be a lot of people when Rand Paul was talking he was talking about his state and how that they have in Congress made it where the people he's Kentucky and how his people they made it you know more comfortable for them to be at home as opposed to going to work and he said that, you know, they give them 32000 for unemployment a year. And uh, I guess they're still giving them the extra money. Because he said, like, the husband and the wife, if they were together and both were unemployed, they would make $64,000. And then given the child tax credit, so you add, you know, about fifteen thousand dollars to that, or something to that effect. He he rounded it up to about eighty thousand dollars that they could get being at home. And then he said that he noticed how it works on the economy when, um, let's say, he said a few years back they had uh, unemployment where it was twenty six weeks, and then they gave them ninety nine weeks. And he said he noticed that the people that got the ninety nine weeks okay when their time was about up well if you go and apply for a job and someone's been laid off for five weeks and the other person's been laid off for 99 weeks well he says okay so which one you gonna pick <laughs> chances are great you're gonna pick the one been out five weeks because the one's been off 99 weeks you know that they haven't done anything so chances are great that they lost some of the skill set that they had and that they're not going to perform at the peak that you need them to perform at. So then you're making a, a permanent unemployed individual.
And so I can see that happening that, you know, whereas we were the ones, they said that the Negro and uh, what was it? The machine would be the cotton or oh, the mule, not the machine. I'm sorry, the mule. The Negro and the mule would be the perfect combination to work that cotton. Well, there's probably going to be some other people that uh, figure out how it feels to work cotton. And I understood that there were some people of European descent that worked the cotton fields. And I want y'all to understand, I'm not into the 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 racism thing. But I, I, I wore this shirt here today for my friend, John. He has some people that's been bothering him and he's handling his business like a real man should, a no limit soldier. And I'm very proud of him. But I came up with this because I get so tired of people treating us like shit. And then they tell us, oh, you're pulling the race cart. You're pulling the race cart. Well, this is another one of my t-shirts. And I don't know if you can see it well, but this is a choker. And this is called the Stack Deck Collection. And what it's saying is, and actually I made this thing up. But, hell, I can't read it upside down. But it said, if I'm playing the race card, then you playing the other 53 stacked against me. That's what this is. So anybody that tells you you're playing the race card, you know, the last time I checked, it was 54 cards in a dick. And so with it being 54 cards in a dick, if I'm playing the race card, you got to be playing the other goddamn 53. And that's stacked against me. And so I will this in honor of John to let him know that I stand in solidarity with him and whatever he's doing. Because uh, when he invited me on his show, it was a change of my life. It gave me the tenacity and the courage. Maybe I already possess, uh, possess the tenacity, but it gave me the courage to go ahead and get on YouTube and do my thing. I really enjoy this. It perhaps may not seem like it, but sometimes I just don't have the energy. But uh, that is not often. But a lot of times I sit up and nod all damn day. Off and on. Just nod. But it's okay. I'm here. And that's the beautiful thing. I'm here. And I asked to be here to 104, actually. But I want to be in my right mind and I want to be able to see. My grandmother lived to 104. My maternal grandmother did. And so I'd like to be able to do the same damn thing. But, you know, however it go, I'm going to be all right. I am going to be all right. So the last thing I think I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to get ready to get off here because I've gone close to my hour and I try not to do the hour thing, but hell, it takes what it takes. So if it takes an hour, I'm going to do a damn hour. And again, I've always told myself, and, and I swear by this, I would love to get a thousand so that I could monetize, but if I never make it to a thousand, and if I have to be on here by my damn self, I'm going to just sit on here and tell my damn story. Someday, some way, somebody going to know my pain. And they going to hear what I say. And they may try one or two things I say. They may not never. But it ain't going to be because I didn't try to get them to. Because I believe that we all are great in our own right. I really do. I believe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So you don't have to deceive anybody with your looks. And I don't have a problem with people that love weave and wigs and, you know, two tones lighter makeup. I, I don't have a problem with that if that's what they need to do to feel pretty. But I don't need to do none of that shit to feel pretty. I am pretty. So that's not my issue. But let me get back to where I was going. 
a lot of people are always talking about that talk. You know, um, um, have you had the talk? Now, this, isn't it ironic that the talk only comes with us? Every damn thing only comes with us. The talk. No, what's the talk? Okay. The talk, you know, when you tell them about the police. Oh, okay. Mmm. No. You know, not really. What are you talking about? Well, you know how you have to, you know, I think everybody, and I know we see people get shot down and shit, but this is before we even saw people getting shot, you know, shot down. We would have people with the Richard Pryor joke, I am reaching into my pocket to get my license. And you damn near have to do that, you know, when you look like us. But um, one thing you can do, though, for real, is uh, read and find out really what you can and can't do. And so in the state of Texas, as far as identifying yourself, and um, I teach this to my son, and I, I well, I taught this to my son, and I teach it to, you know, any young man or woman that I know. Um, I always try to teach the children what I know. And um, if by chance you're out and a policeman stops you and asks you to identify yourself, you do not have to identify yourself. You do not have to be disrespectful. It is in your best interest not to be disrespectful. We get killed following the law. But not following the law. So if a police stop you, the only time that you have to give him your ID, and this is for anybody in the state of Texas, Is if you're not in the commission of a crime. If you're not being arrested. And if they didn't see you. Or if they don't think that you were a witness. To a crime. So I don't know what I just said before that. So let me state that again. If you're not guilty of those three things. Then you don't have to produce your ID. Not in the state of Texas. But what you cannot do is give them a false name, address, and date of birth at any time that a policeman stop you. You don't have to give them no name, no address, no birth date. If you give them one, make sure it's yours. But the law says you don't have to do that in the state of Texas. Now, if you're being lawfully detained, and the Supreme Court set the time for reasonably 20 minutes. So if you're being lawfully detained, a reasonable amount of time is considered 20 minutes, according to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I should say the United States Supreme Court. Okay. You don't have to show your ID. You don't have to tell them your name. You don't have to tell them your date of birth. The only time that you have to, you must give them your name, your date of birth, your address, and present an ID if you have one, is if you are under arrest. Or if you are being reasonably detained past that 20 minutes and they start questioning you, then they should be going into your Miranda rights. And one of the rights of the Miranda tells you that you can remain silent. You have a right to an attorney first and you can remain silent. So if you know that you're not guilty of anything, please just be quiet. Now you have the right to ask, am I under arrest? 
Do you suspect me of a crime? Why did you stop me? You have those rights. You do. And you can ask those questions. Apart from that, then you can say that I do not care to identify myself. Am I under arrest? If they say that you're going to be detained, then you can wait 20 minutes. You can ask, are you free to go? And if they don't talk to you or if they say no, then you can ask for an attorney to be present. And then you exercise your Miranda rights, which is zip it. That's what you do. There is no reason for you to go back and forth with a person with a gun on their side. We teach our children to respect the position. And a lot of people in those positions are less than honorable. But you can't speak for somebody else's nobility. All you can do is speak for yours. So what you would do is be quiet. Go to jail or whatever. Call your parent. Call whoever you need to call once you get there. But nine times out of ten, I look at a lot of police shows and um, I find that those officers, especially the European officers, they really get angry if a war talk back to them. And I don't mean talk back. I mean if a more just speak. You know, if as an adult you ask the question, you know, they treat you like, nigga, what the fuck you think you mean talking back to me? That's the way they act. Some of them even say that. And then some of them get so angry and upset. They start shaking and putting their hands on their gun or they start hitting them. So, you know, it's like you're not supposed to say anything. And I don't know if they're taught that from children or if they taught that in the academy. I don't know where they learn that from. I don't know. But what I'm telling you is you can control you. Because you're the only person you can control. You can't control anybody else. And I hear a lot of people talking about they have to help give their child self-esteem. You cannot give your child self-esteem. You can give them esteem. But self-esteem, as Cat Williams said, did you not know that the first fucking word of that is self? Only they can get self-esteem. And how do you get self-esteem? I agree with Rand Paul. Your actions. He said work, 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 work. I say whatever you can do. Because the little ones don't work. But you can give them something to do. So that they can feel proud about accomplishing whatever it is mom or dad asked them to do. Any uncle, cousin, whoever that's older. Because it is from what you perform. That's where your self-esteem comes from. That's where your self-respect comes from. Your values and your morals come from what's put upon you to do. And then you accomplishing what you're taught to do. That's where it comes from. So you can build their esteem. You can tell them they're beautiful. You can tell them they're great. It's nothing they can, you know, cannot do. But you can't give them self-esteem. You can't buy it. It's just like love. You know, you can't buy that. You have to earn it. Just like respect. You have to earn it. Everybody want to be respected, but they don't want to respect no damn body. How can that be? It cannot. It cannot. We have to start realizing that the things that we were taught again were absolutely backwards. You know, and we need to learn the law of reciprocity is real. You know, 
the reaping what you sow, what you put out is what you get back. And then some people probably feel, but I'm not putting out nothing. But you don't know what you put out. Because it's not always something you can measure in dollars and cents. It's not something you can measure. It could be your time. It could be your kind voice. It could be your smile. You don't know how far that really goes in somebody's life that's about to give up. So you may feel worthless, but that don't make you worthless. If you have any kind of core values, morals, any kind of principles that you live by, trust me. Kwame always say, whatever room you walk in, you know, be an asset to the room. Well, I would have to agree with that. You can add to the room. It doesn't always have to be money. And you know, I'm going to close on that because I could go on and on and on. Uh, but I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be trying to go live on Friday. I am going to go live. I'm going to interview uh, Arthur Cecilia. And I'm, excuse me, Cecilia, I wrote it down so that I could say it correctly. And I left off doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Cecilia Wilson-Smith and she is the author of this booklet. It's called Marriage in Review. Very nice book. I love this book. It's easy reading. Anybody contemplating getting married or if you recently got married or if you've been married forever, and uh, you just want to do something together. This book, I suggest that you read it. And it's out at Amazon. Is where I bought my copy. But it's a small book. Very easy reading. Very powerful. Especially for those that call themselves believers. Um, you will really enjoy this book. And... Um, we're going to try to do this at high noon on Friday, February the 24th. I've never gone live on my um, stream yard, so I have to try to figure out how to work that. But that's what we're going to try to do, and uh, it should be great. And so I'm going to do my first interview, if possible, on Friday the 24th. I'd like for you guys to join me, those that are regulars. And uh, if you're new to this channel, I would like to ask you if you would like, if you would leave a comment, if you would subscribe, and if you would share it with at least three people. And if you don't know three people you want to share it with, share it with one. And if you don't know one, then thank you for even thinking about me and coming to see me today. I want to shout out once again, my guys, True Results and the True Results family. It's been real. And the John Hinge family. We are one. The We Are One family. The Bus Life. And the Bus Life family, Self Talk, and AJ Graves. And I also want to shout out Jessica Reed and her channel. So, once again, this is Toothless Tiger. It's been a pleasure. Have a grand evening and goodbye. <laughs>